Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. All right. Andrew from Dudley, Massachusetts says, Hey, DG, I heard after Joe Johnson finished the movie Captain America, he might start to work on Jurassic Park 4. Do you think that you can volunteer as an advisor? <laughs> P.S. What can you tell me about the dinosaur Tarbosaurus? All right. Well, Andrew, first of all, it's very kind of you to uh, uh, think that I would be... Uh, somebody that would be a part of Jurassic Park 4. As much as I appreciate it, as much as I love it, I don't necessarily think they're going to come to me for anything. There are too many other people out there that uh, are much more qualified than I am. Uh, but as to your question about Tarbosaurus, Tarbosaurus is a cool dinosaur. Uh, its new name is Tyrannosaurus Batar. Uh, all dinosaurs have a first and last name. His name used to be Tarbosaurus Batar, but paleontologists came to realize that this dinosaur that is found over in Asia, this dinosaur is so similar to Tyrannosaurus rex here in North America that its name should reflect its relationship. And therefore, rather than being called Tarbosaurus, its new name is Tyrannosaurus batar. Now, Tyrannosaurus batar, or Tarbosaurus, however you prefer to pronounce it or, or name it, um, it it's not as robust as Tyrannosaurus rex, but this is a big dinosaur. He's a big, heavy-duty predator who was probably the top predator of his time in Asia. He's, a, he's an incredibly big guy. All right, um, Edward from Tappan, New York says, Hello, DG. Um, I already know the answer to who wins in a fight between Spinosaurus and T-Rex. But do you think the reason why people chose Spinosaurus is because they think Jurassic Park 3 is realistic? or they just like the dinosaur. Because I keep seeing answers with enough, with not enough or good evidence. I know what you mean, Edward. What, what you're referring to is that in the movie Jurassic Park, I think it's Jurassic Park 3, uh, they had a Spinosaurus kill a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And that started this big debate of who would win in a fight between these two dinosaurs. I've stated my opinion over and over again, and I agree with you, Edward, that Tyrannosaurus rex is just too monstrous of a dinosaur when it comes to its jaw and tooth design. Spinosaurus is just not built that way. He's big. There's no doubt that Spinosaurus is big. But when you look at the jaws of Spinosaurus and that elongated snout, they just don't, in my opinion, have the ability to exert the bite force necessary to break the neck or even penetrate into the vital organs of something as big as a Tyrannosaurus rex. Yes, it's true that in a lot of cases, people choose one animal based on how much they like the animal, but um, there are some other people that have pretty good arguments, certainly when it comes to its size. Uh, but I agree with you. At the end of the day, Edward, in my opinion, there would not be much of a fight I do think Tyrannosaurus rex would easily dispatch something like a Spinosaurus if they would have ever come in contact with, with each other, which they wouldn't have. But let's say for the sake of argument they did, um, I don't think there would be much of a fight at all. And I base that off of my opinion, looking at all the evidence on both sides. All right. Um, uh, Shi Juke from Malaysia says, what are the dinosaurs' synamorphoses? Uh, basically, um, uh, synapo synapomorphoses, synomorphoses, synapomorphoses. What that is uh, for everybody is that means what are the common characteristics of dinosaurs? Uh, she juke, there's a lot of characteristics that, that uh, make dinosaurs fit into the family of dinosaurs. A good percentage of it is the skull design, the number of holes that you find in the head. There's some other similarities or some other things that make them dinosaurs. Uh, some of it has to do with hip structure. Some of it has to do with uh, the number of vertebra in the hips, uh, those kind of things. Uh, he says, is it true that modern birds have all of the features of a theropod? Well, they do have a large number of features that clearly show us that theropods, that is predatory meat-eating dinosaurs, and birds are very closely related. Now, there are some distinctive differences between the two, but I will tell you that overall, when you look at birds, you are looking at a dinosaur, at a theropod dinosaur. Uh, in fact, paleontologists classify modern birds as dinosaurs. Uh, modern birds are considered avian dinosaurs. So um, there are a tremendous amount of similarities, not just between different dinosaur species, but there's absolute similarities between predatory dinosaurs and birds. All right, Peter from West Bloomfield, Michigan says, Hey, Dinosaur George, I'm a big fan. Peter, thank you very much. That's kind of you. And I hope you're doing good. I am, Peter, and thank you. I hope you and your family are doing good as well. My question is, 
which species of dinosaur lived the longest in the geological time period? Thank you for my answering my questions and have a great day. Well, uh, Peter, first of all, you're welcome. Thank you for the courtesy. I hope you have a great day as well. Uh, you know, who is the dinosaur that would have been the most successful? Uh, in the geologic record, that is basically the history of life on Earth, is what the geological record is. It's just the history of life on Earth told through mineral and rock specimens is basically what it is. Uh, I would think Iguanodon probably represents one of the most successful dinosaurs, the dinosaurs or the, the species that made it through most of the geological time periods during the Mesozoic period. Um, I think it would be Iguanodon. You know, I cannot think of another dinosaur that was as successful as that animal was. Um, if anybody out there can think of another one, let me know. But you know what? I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a more successful dinosaur than, um, than Iguanodon. And not only was it successful in the terms that it made it through the Jurassic and then into the Cretaceous, but also you look at where they find these things. These dinosaurs seem to be worldwide, so they were apparently the most successful. That's my opinion. All right, uh, Ian from Spokane, Washington says, what is the difference between Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex? Ian, that's a good question. Uh, a quick glance of the two, and you'd almost think you're looking at the same animal. But when you look a lot closer, you'll see there's pretty distinct differences. First and foremost is the size difference between them. Even though Allosaurus grew to be a pretty big dinosaur, it didn't compare to the sheer enormity of the size of Tyrannosaurus rex. Second, and the thing that's the most apparent, is its arm design. Allosaurus has relatively long arms with three very large claws, whereas Tyrannosaurus rex has very short arms with two real tiny claws. So that's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. Then there's also a dramatic difference between tooth design. Uh, the teeth of Allosaurus are much more thin-like, much more blade-like, uh, better designed for slicing through meat, whereas Tyrannosaurus rex's teeth are very thick, fat, and robust. And they're really better designed for crunching through bone and crunching through body armor. You see, Allosaurus didn't really have to deal with a lot of body armor in his life other than maybe the neck armor that you'd find on, um, on a uh, um, Stegosaurus. Uh, certainly the plates on Stegosaurus's back, but those aren't really very heavily armored. They're not that, that thick and robust. Um, so um, Allosaurus's teeth are better suited for the prey that it hunted. But then when you come along with Tyrannosaurus rex, now he's dealing with monstrosities like uh, Euoplocephalus and Ankylosaurus and all the big ceratopsians with their big heavy shields and frills and horns. So that's why you see a difference. So really the difference between them is quite distinctive once you look more closely at the skeleton and at the dinosaur in its entirety. Don't necessarily look at the shape. Take a real close look and look at all the things and you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of distinction between stinky old crummy Alice, I mean Tyrannosaurus, and that great enormous spectacular dinosaur named Allosaurus, who everybody loves and the Allosaurus will always be everybody's favorite dinosaur. Okay, maybe not everybody's, but certainly mine. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I, I uh, am doing my best to answer a bunch of these as quickly as I can. I'm getting so many of them, and some of these questions, I, I, I dread to think of some of the really cool questions that have never made it to me. I would love, um, I'd love, I'd love to go in and read every single one if I had the time, but I just don't. So they're filtered through to me, and I'm getting some good questions, but I would wonder what kind of questions are out there that I never get a chance to see. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. For you young people out there, practice your reading because it's incredibly important. And for you older kids out there, and I say that jokingly because I have as many grown adults that ask questions as I do kids on this thing, um, always use your best manners and treat people the way you'd like to be treated. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.